Hey guys, how is everybody? I hope everybody's doing well. Um, <laughs> hopefully we are here on the disassembly of this uh, <laughs> 340 again. And me and my youngest daughter have been sitting out here looking for a clutch spring. Um, clutch flew apart upon removal and uh, I've still got to put the springs back in. They're a little tricky but they're doable. Um, <laughs> It flew apart. I found all of it but one spring and she came out to help hunt it. And honestly, the dang thing ended up laying up here in the corner of the bench and the rest of it landed completely on the other end of the shop. Um, <laughs> just kind of some of the stuff I deal with here on doing this stuff. I'm sure you have some of your other guys do too. Um, things happen that don't always go as planned or on the saws I build it don't. You go through a bunch that you know everything goes really well and then you'll get two or three that's kind of a headache um, and in my case they're usually in order and it usually means i just need to take a break out of the saw shop for a while um, but i got a couple other saws knocked out um, i'm wanting to at least get this one tore down this evening it really won't take long um, and just kind of see what we've got with this Warhawk cylinder. Um, I've honestly never used one. It looked okay. It's about what's expected with a $30 cylinder. It's actually like $29 and some change, but uh, you know, whatever it is, what it is, um, I'm sure it'll be just fine. Um, I've used them that's cheaper and everything turned out all right. I bought some. Uh, 372 cylinders that were here and I've got both of them still on running saws and they run awesome they were farmer tech cylinders um, that were 21 bucks a piece state side um, yeah, it seems most people want a big bore these days and you know it makes getting a hold of the standard 50 millimeter bore 372 jug a little easier to get a hold of and a little less expensive and the way I do these saws is I'll take the muffler off and we got to pull the starter cover off. It's just the way I set up my degree wheel and check port time and I like to use the flywheel to spin everything around. And honestly, we might end up just pulling this whole thing down. Um, I'm not 100% sure yet, but we'll just have to see uh, where squish falls at but if it ends up being too awful loose we'll end up having to pull the uh it's actually called a cylinder pin some people call it just bearing cap um i swear i've got a gun sitting here with a flat head on it somewhere or maybe i don't um thought i did have but whatever we'll just turn them out by hand um that's actually how I dial the squish in on this particular model of saw when we don't have a lathe here in the shop. Um, as you can uh, block sand the top of that pen or base. I know there's going to be people frown on that. I really don't care. <laughs> We're moving materials. We're moving material as long as everything ends up being flat and true. Um, he really cares um, and this saw ran good i know justin had commented and said you know it looks like it runs good to me for what it is which it did it's strong um you know most people would be happy with it i think it's 48 and a half cc's or so um and i could make this cylinder stronger but at the end of the day it's an open port cylinder um I just don't think it's going to do what I want it to do. And, you know, I'm talking in that 14,000 plus territory um, and, still re and still retain a little bit of grunt. Um, I just really don't know if I would have ever got the 14,000 out of that. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Um, that was mainly the deal. It just wasn't zippy enough to suit me. It held RPM good in the cup, but it was a low RPM. Um, I tried a couple different exhaust roofs on it. One was pretty low, the other one was still 
moderately low at a point where a lot of people would set these, which is around 105, 106. Um, some guys will set them later than that. If you're, you know, if you're wanting to, you know, pull a bunch of torque out of it, I guess. Um, but there is a caveat to that. Um, the lower you go with that exhaust roof, you're slowing the saw down. And, you know, no one can really argue that. You're giving up engine RPM for static compression. It just is what it is. Um, and if anyone argues that, they really don't understand how a two-cycle engine works at all. But I really don't think anyone's going to argue it. Um, let's see, you're going to pull a handlebar off. and I've got a metal handlebar and I'm half tempted just to put it on it when I put the damn thing back together. Uh, but I don't know, kind of like the plastic one that gives it that. Homeowner 340, um, kind of a cheap saw kind of look. But it actually don't feel too bad while you're running it either. That's kind of the deal. I kind of wanted the original starter cover on it. Uh, we'll eventually get that, but I may just see if I can find a 340 sticker and put on what we have. And guys, use hand tools anywhere you can. Um, I used to help a guy out out here at the transmission shop every now and then, but... Sadly, I hadn't seen him in seven or eight years and went out there a couple weeks back and he didn't even recognize me, but I didn't recognize him either, so <laughs> it is what it is, getting older sucks. Um, <laughs> some people never look any different they get older, but uh, I kind of look and feel my age, but whatever it is, what it is, that's just all part of life. Um... But anyway, back to this thing, um, you know, I may need the cylinder for something else one day. Um, may get a saw in here that belongs to someone else, and, you know, there's that possibility that, uh, you know, it could need a cylinder, and, you know, we'll have a nice one here. It's all OEM. It's the cylinder that I showed the port work on, showed, like, how I'll texture, and, um, polish an exhaust port. Uh, it turned out really nice. Um, well, I think the first, the squish on it's really tight. It's like 18 thou. Um, and the first exhaust roof I tried was 109. The holy crap was a saw torquey. Like really, really torquey. But I could only, with a good safe four stroke, it would only turn like 11 grand out of the cut. I could get it up to where it would touch 11.8 but it was just so lean there I wouldn't have left it and ran it there to use it at all um, and you know if you do the math and um, if you've ported saws a lot you'll say well 109 that's pretty dang low um, you should know it wasn't going to rev high but I did go back in um, I moved it a little bit, um, like three degrees. And if you're going in and making adjustments, make fine adjustments. Don't make a hole. Don't go in and cut, you know, a hundred thousandths out of the port. Um, just make little small adjustments and, uh, you know, kind of see where you're at. Um, especially if it's something easy to get a port. But um, in this case, what little RPM I picked up from that movement, um, Kind of made me just want to go ahead and swap over to the 346 style cylinder. I don't really have a saw here that's got that style of jug on it anyway, so um kind of wanted to do so. Um, get the carburetor up out of these. And get the throttle linkage off and leave it in the chassis of the saw. These, these are, once you learn these, the first couple you might do, you might be a little aggravating, but once you learn this series of saw, they're like so simple to work on. Um, I say that, and this little linkage rod ain't wanting to come up out of there at all. <laughs> If I get it to perform like at 351, I'll be happy. Um, 
I don't know what I'm going to do as far as port timing on it. I don't ever hardly port the same saw the same way, especially if it's the same style or chassis of saw. But nine times out of ten, I usually know what they're going to do by the numbers. But this cylinder here kind of flew me for a loop a little bit. Um, that harness is taped up because it had a little... Uh, had a little place in one of the wires. Um, lay that to the side, get the fuel line off, get something to plug it. It shouldn't shoot fuel up out of it, but it might. Get it off of the carb and then we'll be, it should be ready to uh, pull four cylinder bolts and get the cylinder off. That's probably, I ain't really spraying fuel, but I know how these things build up. Tank pressure just sitting and it hot. Um, they can cause a mess. Let's see, I've got one of these that I have the end of it ground down flat. It's not that one. To remove cylinder head bolts. Um, I'll show that cylinder pan maybe once I get the cylinder off, but uh, most of you have probably seen it anyway. <sighs> Bolts don't have to be that tight, I just kind of overdo things. I've had one or two saws of cylinder head bolts that broke loose, or worked loose, um, and I don't really want it to happen again. Blue Loctite is smart to use on them, but I ain't gonna lie to anyone. I barely Loctite anything. If it's someone else's saw, I'll Loctite almost everything on it. I pull apart with saws of my own. And I usually just get it, you know, the good old tight enough, and the, or the good and tight, and leave it alone. <laughs> It's pretty boring, but you know what? It's a possibility it could help someone in removing a cylinder off one of these. Again, a fairly simple saw to work on. Well, that bolt came out, but I don't know where it went. Probably on the flywheel. We'll get it in a little bit. Doesn't take very long. Um, if I'd have had the, my drill set up, the flat head in it, we could have shaved a few more, a couple more minutes off of it. But again, super simple saws to work on. We gotta find those bolts that fell out. Cause honestly, I don't think I have any more. I'm gonna have to order one of those little assorted bolt packs, of husky bolts. Um, I've got a John's red out here I need to build. It's going to be a case up build 2166 and I'm honestly tempted to, I've got two really nice X torque 50 millimeter top ends. I'm half tempted to use one of those on the build. Um, I don't have a bigger saw here at all. It's X torque so you know, it'll be something different. That moto seal you always have to pry it back loose. Um, good stuff. And it's fuel resistant and, you know, really what you should be using. Um, a lot of the other sealants are not. Um, ultra black's not, ultra gray, your high temp red is not fuel resistant. Um, just one of them things, you should use a sealant that says it's fuel resistant. Almost any like motorcycle engine assembly stuff is going to be fuel resistant. And the other stuff will work for a little bit. I know I've used it in the past before I knew any better. Um, you will eventually, it will eventually go to eat in a way, and you will eventually end up with an air leak. Alright, guys, next thing I'm going to do, I may just leave it on there till we're ready to.
put it all back together and set that over there on the other bench, I guess. But um, we'll see if we can dig out some little nose and get this piston off. Um, I paused you guys just so I could uh, I drop one of the cylinder head bolts on the floor and we needed to pick that up. Um, this floor kind of eats bolts. Really, it does. <laughs> But again, yeah, there wasn't anything really wrong with this saw. It actually ran pretty decent. It just it wasn't as high strung as I was wanting. And I'm really hoping we get that out of this uh, Warhawk top end. I've used another cylinder that was this design. It was on Simple Man's 2150. You can probably just search that on the channel. And uh, come up with that saw build. Um, it was one badass little saw, one of the strongest 50cc saws I've ever built. Um, the 351 I just done um, is a little beast. I really still don't know how it turned out as well as it did. I think it has to do with the finger ports and stuff I put in it, and just kind of the how extreme I took the shapes and the width of the intake and exhaust support and some of the work I've done to the transfers. Um, contrary to belief, um, people can say and argue what they want to argue. I don't really care. Um, all of that does matter. Um, what are we hitting? We're hitting something here. Okay guys, so hopefully you can see this pan. You can even see where I've decked it. Um, i get the glue back off of it, but um, it's about that thick. That's what you've got to use to uh, put a 350 or 346 style top end on it. But um, what I'm gonna have to do is uh, the 346 cylinder um, has to feed off of the case. So, uh, what we've got to do is uh, cut a little channel into this thing just so it can get a pulse for the um, impulse line for the carburetor. Um, I'll probably wait and do that at the very end, but it's just something that's got to be done. Um, what I'm going to do next is get this base cleaned up, get the piston out, and get it kind of halfway assembled on there. and. Uh, It'll just be temporary because I'm sure we'll end up doing something with it and uh, see them more squishes out on it. All right, guys, we've got our cylinder snugged up down on there. Um, you normally kind of have to clearance the case over here, and I believe I'm going to have to. It's not really hitting it, but it's close. Um, it's just like some of the fins, the supports in this case. Um, when I grind the uh, slot in it for the impulse, I'll probably just knock a little bit of that off just to be safe. Um, but she went right down in there and, you know, just sat right down on the base. So, I don't know, we'll just have to see. Um, I'm probably going to have to dig out and locate some solder here to see where we're at with Squish. Alright, guys, I've just got some, with just, I think, 30 thou silver solder here. It may be a little thicker than that, but... Uh, I normally like to use really thin solder when I go to get them tight, but like I said, I have no idea where this is going to be. I can tell it's going to be pretty tight. And that is a good thing. Um, how tight? I don't know, but she got her smashed down pretty good. Um, I'd say it's thinner than 30 thou. I don't know how thick that solder is. It could be 40 thou, but uh, we're about to find out. Got my cal caliper zeroed out. Um, Twenty-two thou. I don't know if you can pick it and see that, but I'm happy with that. That's just fine. Um, it's actually 21 now, now that I'm mashing down on it. It's teetering between 21 and 22. Um, 
once we get some glue in there it'll be 22 and a half 23 thou or so it'll be just fine all right guys we're back it's time to wrap this video up that's kind of how i'm gonna do it just you know make a couple little videos out of it um it'll probably already be done and running by the time you see this first video i guess but um anyway with that said um squish 22 thou that's fine i'm happy with that it's close enough um and take note that i have decked quite a bit of material off of that bearing cap in order to get the squish dialed in on the cylinder we removed um so if you get this and put it on your saw with a gasket or something you're probably gonna end up with different timing numbers but with that said um really low exhaust reef 110 degrees um the transfers were staggered if you watched the unboxing video it wasn't much but 124 and 126 is what i'm coming up with um intake 74 degrees um, those are really really good numbers to work with um, i've got kind of got an idea in my head of where to go um, i could get could just copy what i done on simple man's john's Red and i about know exactly how it would run but um, i could copy the numbers i done on the 351 and what i would hope was that it would outperform that saw a little bit because it's got tighter squish and you know a completely better transfer port design in my opinion but um then there's part of me that kind of wants to go in between there and see what i end up with but uh there's numbers all over the internet that people have done and used with these um it just depends on where you look and what you want to do with the saw um there's no right or wrong way i guess is what i'm getting at you probably wouldn't want to go in and completely butcher it up but um the numbers i've got in my head would still you know be good and safe to use for a work saw but the thing would be fun and snappy and fast um but we'll get into all of that in the next video like i said it'll probably be running by the time you see this um but anyway, um, I'll try to put something together here. Um, as always, thank you guys for watching. And everybody have a good day.